start by assembling everything as in the order shown in the manual, including the winding drum, the, the ratchet. The gears get added into the clock by adding the previously completed minute hand armbar into the central location. Assembly is simplified by printing out the, the diagram on page 15 showing the various gears and that helps identify them as they're described in the assembly guide. Start by adding gear three and, and an arbor and spacer three. And you, you can see when you spin the minute hand arbor, the other gear spins easily. Add another three inch arbor. And spacer two. And I can see when I when I spin the minute hand arbor, everything still spins easily. Now it's time for the escapement. Add an arbor. Add the escapement. And then a small spacer. Everything still spins easily, although it takes a little bit more sport force because of the, the gear ratios. And now I can add the pallet and there's a small gear that drops into the pocket. Add the arbor into the pallet and drop the pallet into position. There's going to be a spacer and another bearing on top of the pallet. And there should be just enough, there should be just a slight amount of extension of the arbor through the bearing. And then I just gently tighten the set screw on the pallet. And before I continue too much farther, I need to add the back of the pendulum arm. And the reason for adding this now is this extension on the, the back of the upper standoff is used to help hold the, the frame uh, flat against the wall. So I'm going to add the, the pendulum arm upper right now and then two metric screws into the 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 pallet you know, through the pallet and onto the the pendulum arm i don't need to tighten these too much just yet just get them positioned for now i'll tighten them later I'll tighten them later when everything is against the wall and things can be tight things can be tightened down to make sure that the the pallet arm is is level relative to the frame. The next step is adding the pre-assembled ratchet into the the remaining position with a three millimeter arbor hole. And then add the previously assembled winding drum and gear eight with a skateboard bearing already in the pocket. And then that should just drop into the bearing. Make, I've got about two feet of string loose and just make sure that the string is going out the bottom of the clock.
and then gear five in the last remaining arbor position. And there's a spacer. And the spacer has a, a large flat just so that it has some support while it's printing. The spacer can go either direction. I think it looks better if the flat is up because it's mostly hidden by the bearing. It's less visible that way. And then add gear five. And I've only got one gear left, which is gear six. That goes on the central arbor. And at this point, I can add the front dial. And I've, ar I've already added the bearing holder onto the front dial. The easiest way to add the dial is to just place it over the center arbor and the gear eight arbor and then just get it mostly lined into position and then wiggle the the arbors one by one and then the last one is typically the bearing when that drops into position every the whole front dial will drop into place and fall into position. And that can be secured using three screws. These screws don't need to be very tight. They're just holding the, the frame in position. So there's no need to crank them super tight. And then you can go ahead and add the hands and make sure you can check, make sure you can test the friction clutch. And what I want to test for right now is that if, if I rotate the minute hand, the hour hand moves with it at a 1 12th ratio. At this point, we can hang the clock against the wall. And one of the first steps is to adjust the leveling feet so that the clock is level and flat against the wall. And that's going to help prevent frame sag. The first step is to adjust the screw in a wall stud so that the, the upper standoff is flush against the wall. If, if that is loose, the clock is susceptible to sag. And if it's too tight, then the clock won't hang properly. So tighten the screw so that the upper standoff is flush against the wall. And then I can loosen the caps on the lower standoffs so that they're just touching the wall. And I should be able to pull down on the frame and there is no visible sag, even though I'm applying several pounds of force. And when that is adjusted properly, tighten the nuts against the caps and everything locks into position. Once the frame is flush against the wall, I can assemble the lower portions of the pendulum arm put the pieces together. These pieces just drop into position. And then I can, then once the pendulum arm is level, I can gently tighten the screws holding the pendulum arm position. It would be a great idea right now to test the bearings supporting the pendulum to make sure that they are low friction and able to run this clock properly. Start with the, the frame level against the wall, bring the pendulum arm to one side and release it. And the pendulum should swing and it should take several minutes before you see the amplitude degrading to negligible amplitude. 
It should be a minimum of at least five minutes of free swing, ideally 10 or maybe even 20 minutes of free swing time. And that's telling you that the pendulum support bearings are low friction and that will be uh, and that will enable this clock to run for a very long time. And we can watch this run for several minutes and notice the amplitude and how quickly it degrades. So I'm just going to step aside and we can watch this. So that was about 15 minutes and you can see the pendulum still has some amplitude. The bearings used to support the pendulum are going to work great to run this clock. The next step could possibly be to hang random weights to see how much weight is going to be required to keep this clock running and probably start with two or three pounds and just keep adding slight amount of extra weight. Uh, if you're running it just on a single cord, then you have to double the amount of weight to account for the pulley and then add about a 50% safety margin. So if it takes two pounds for the clock to run, then doubling it to account for the pulley would be about four pounds and 50% safety margin would be about six pounds total. Uh, this weight right here is about six and a half pounds and you can hang the weight by just feeding the the string underneath the pulley and then up and over there's a the hanging hook is right behind the dial right here and it's hidden from view but if you put your finger through the cord and then just slip your finger over the the hook you can hang the cord on the hanging hook and then just push the pendulum to the side and the clock should run this clock is probably my most reliable weight driven clock just based on the small gear sizes it's just a very robust design it's got all of the the new features from my other clocks so it's got all the best features you wind the clock by just turning the knob the winding key is very reliable Here, let me change the time get the time set properly and the, the time can be adjusted on this clock by, by loosening the, the nuts at the bottom of the pendulum and turning them and then snugging them back up. And you can make very small adjustments, a fraction of a turn, and get this clock accurate to a minute or two per week. So thanks for watching. Hope you like the new clock. I'm going to sell the design on my mini factory and i'm going to sell it very cheaply uh, even you can still get this design for free but i think the ease of assembly on this clock makes it well worth the small cost that i'm going to charge for this design so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and stick around i should have more designs coming soon thanks